Hello and welcome to Photoshop is Fun, my first tutorial on the site. My name is Kenneth Lobenberg, and today I'm going to show you how to go ahead and adjust the saturation and levels and replace this guy in this photo. Alright, I'm just going to let you know I am doing this on a Mac, so I'm going to be saying command, whatever the key command is. Uh, for you on the PC, it should be alt, uh, just to let you know that. So, any time you hear command, if you're on a PC, think alt. Alright, let's go ahead and get started here. I shot this photo this morning while I was running. I just stopped and was like, wow, that's just a great view. I just want to share this with everybody. But, you know, when I got it home, I looked at it and I'm like, you know, we're, we're missing some tones here. It looks like the levels aren't quite right. And this guy is just it's kind of boring. It didn't quite grasp the, the majestic view that I had this morning. So let's go ahead and see if we can go ahead and do a little bit of editing on that. So the first thing we want to go ahead and do is adjust the levels. So let's go ahead and hit Command L. And that's going to bring up our levels. So you can see here we've got some low areas in our dark. So we're going to bring that in, which will darken the photo, but it's, just, it's almost kind of too dark here. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust these mid-tones, which is that middle slider. And I'm going to lighten them up some. I kind of want to get some more of that information in there if I can. Now, it does look slightly washed out here, but we're going to go ahead and fix that. So let's go ahead and hit OK. And now let's go up to uh, Command U and bring up our saturation. Now you don't want to go too much on your saturation because you're going to get some weird psychedelic photo that looks super fake and you know looks like a horrible Instagram filter or something like that. And it's going to bring in a lot of noise and just it's going to look bad. But let's go ahead and adjust it up slightly. You still don't want to go too far because even too much will make it look, this photo look fake and you know, you kind of want to keep it in the realistic realm. So let's go ahead and keep it down here, maybe in the 30s. Now, for you, your photo may be, slight, may be completely different. You may have shot this in a really, really dreary day, and you may need to really bump that into the 60s. But it's more of one of those things you really need to look at and judge for yourself after you understand how to use this tool. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit OK there. So, you know, so far we're, we're looking at so this and it's looking nice. So now we really want to start looking at the sky. Now, up here under Selection, we've got Color Range. Now, yours probably does not say Command H. I have set a custom key command here. Now, as somebody who uses Photoshop professionally every day, I find setting your own key commands is unbelievably important to increasing your speed. If you find yourself using the command more than once a day, set a custom key command. Now, that can be done really easily in Photoshop. If you come over here to Edit, keyboard shortcuts and then you just find what you're looking for you can go ahead and set a custom key command now sometimes you might go let's say we're going to do command D which is deselect it's going to give you this warning you know hey if you do this deselect is not going to work so what you know that's okay if you don't use deselect like you find hey I only use that like once a month replace that for something that's convenient for you if it says something like copy and paste something you use every day look for another key command. There's lots of keys in your keyboard, find something that works. I'm not going to change this here myself because I personally like the way mine are. So I'm going to hit cancel. But you'll probably hit OK after you set those. Alright, so let's go ahead and hit our new key command. I'm going to do Command H, which is my key command. It may not be yours. Alright, so color range. Color range is an amazing ability to go ahead and select ranges of color, hence the name. Now right now, my previous selection was the sky, but I'm going to show you how this works. So let's say if I come in here into these darker areas, you can see they start to turn green. Now the reason mine turn green is because I have mine set to quick mask view, and I have my quick mask inverted. I like my quick mask to select areas that I'm selecting. So let's say, you know, I think grayscale is the, uh, the default, so it's going to look like this, and you can select those areas. But I find this really hard to see your photo. Same with black and white, these, I just, I find it really difficult to see where I'm selecting. So I kind of like to go for the quick mask, because even if I'm selecting an area, I can see that. Now, right here we have fuzziness and range. Range is if you're doing the local color clusters, which we're not going to cover today. So we're just going to stick with fuzziness. Now what fuzziness is, if I set this fuzziness really, really low, and you, I select this one little area, you can see that it's barely selecting anything. Now with... with color range, you can hit shift and continue to click in more areas. 
Now you can see that this is working, but it's taking forever. So now with fuzziness, what it kind of does is it takes those colors and it says, well, how many of your friends do you want to bring with you? So the more friends you bring, the more is selected. Now, this is too much of a selection here. You can see we're getting way too much of the trees, the entire road. It's just too much. So we're going to pull this back some. All right. Let's pull it back to about here. Now, your color range will vary depending on the photo and how much tone is in there. So this is one of those subjective things. I can't tell you 71 is going to be right for everybody. It's just the way this works. Make sure I get those clouds. Maybe a little bit of these colors over here. Nope, that did not work. Ah, uh, see now, there we go. What I did there is I just changed my eyedropper. Now I had it set to 31, which means it's taking an average of 31 pixels of space. I don't want that. I want it to take point by point. Okay. So we have that. Now, pull it back. Now you see here, this is the selected area, and you see the same thing here. We get a little bit of the road. I'm not worried about that. We're going to paint that out later. So we're going to let that go. Let's go ahead and hit OK. And I'm going to go ahead and hit New Layer. And I'm going to go ahead over here to add a layer mask. And I'm going to do that, not because I really want anything in this particular layer that I want to save, but I just kind of want to save that layer mask for the moment. There's a lot of ways to do this, but I'm old school and it's the way I've done it since then. So I'm just going to go ahead and keep it up for now. All right, so right now we have some beautiful clouds here, the way I wish they looked that day. And I'm going to paste those in. And there's two ways you can get these clouds to go ahead and do this. One, you can stretch them, just standard, and that is going to stretch the clouds. And they might look a little stretch. The other way you can do this is Edit, Content Aware, Scale. You know what this does? It's going to try to keep the proportions of these clouds and their proportions to each other correct for when you stretch it. So it's going to try not to skew them as much as possible. It still will skew them some. It's just the nature of stretching things. This cloud here got a little larger in the center, but it's not as bad. Now I'm going to go ahead and hit return here. Now this may take a minute. And the reason is because it's got a lot of processing to do. If you've got a slower or older computer, it may take some time. So be patient. All right, so we got these great clouds here now. Let's go ahead down to our layer mask. I'm going to go ahead and hit Command, Select, and you see when I hit Command, you get that little kind of square near your finger. That's going to select these, and you can see the marching ants are back out. All right, I'm going to come up here now to Select, Modify, Expand. And I'm going to expand these by about three pixels. I'm just going to do that to kind of grab in some of those other colors, and we're going to fix that in, a little, in just a minute. Okay, so now let's go ahead and hit the Layer Mask button again. And you can see we, we've got a layer mask. Now it looks okay. It's the first stage. You might be really excited now you got it there, but let's keep going. And first of all, you can see that we've got some carving into these trees. You know, if I take off the layer mask, you can see there's a lot more trees that we're missing. And if you look in this road, you can see that we got sky in the road. That's really kind of an odd road there, isn't it? So the first thing I want to do is select my layer mask again. Go over to my brush and make sure my hardness is set to 100%, which is really important for this. And I am just going to go ahead and paint this out. Now, the way layer masks work is that white areas show and black areas cover. So I'm just basically painting black into the areas I don't want sky to show up. You know, we had some over here in this car and on the table. You know, it's just because they're similar color to the sky that we used to have here. So that looks pretty good. Now, Keeping the same area selected on the layer mask, I'm going to go over here to Feather. And I'm going to start feathering this. Now you see if I feather it way too much, it just it doesn't do anything. That's just gross. But I'm going to feather this until I think it looks pretty good. You, know, you don't want too much glow around these trees. There we go. Now I still got to carve into some of these a little bit, but... Hopefully nobody will notice at the moment. You know, if you really want to come in, you can do a much better selection with that range selection and really start getting into the nitty gritty and that will give you a better selection. But for expediency's sake, I'm just trying to kind of show you guys the basics today. All right, now the sky is a little bit too saturated for the rest of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit Command U again. 
but instead of making it more saturated, I'm actually going to make it less. Just to pull that out just a little. And there you go. You can go ahead and flatten and save this, share it on your Facebook page, and try to tell everybody how awesome you know your view was today on that run. So again, my name is Kenneth Lobenberg. Uh, I run Photoshop is fun. Please share and like this video. I'm sure if you enjoyed it, so will your friends who actually have Photoshop. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments. I love giving out more answers. And you know, also if there's something you're like, hey, this is great, but I'd love to learn how to do X, Y, or Z. Let me know in the comments, and we can definitely get another video up for you and uh, get these guys rolling for you. So thank you so much. Bye-bye.